Hello, my name is John Thorne from Thorny Motorsport and this uh, little bit of delay since our last video is going to be a video I think hopefully useful both for owners and prospective new owners um, called the forecourt inspection. Now it's been a while to do the video, apologies for that, but as you'll probably see from the state of the car park, we're somewhat busy. I've got 54 McLarens here for work, and I'm afraid as much as videos we find fun doing and we think they're very useful for you, customers' cars must take precedent. So with a backlog of cars, we're looking at six to eight week lead times, I've got to make sure we get the cars done first. But we've had a few issues come around last, in the course of the last few weeks regarding cars that are new to owners and also cars that are being sold. Uh, I thought a little video allowing people to inspect the cars before or post inspection would be useful. Now before I go any further, a couple of things. Number one, I'm going to go through every single problem that these cars can have. Okay, It is not an all seeing, all dancing, everything wrong with this car, these cars are terrible. It's listing every single thing that you can look and find for these cars wrong on all the cars. So this isn't some kind of criticism of the car itself, they're brilliant, but being forewarned is forearmed. Secondly, I've got to say, with everything I know about McLarens, I would never buy a McLaren without a full mechanical inspection, which takes three hours, needs a ramp and under trays and all those things required. There are too many things on these cars that can be easily hidden or rather easily missed, and therefore if you buy a car without having those inspected, you are going to be in a problem. Now, people say to me, oh, I buy a car and it's got a warranty. Now, just because a car has a warranty doesn't mean the things that are wrong with it will be covered. These are broken springs, for example, they're corrosion, they're not car warranty. So you buy a nice shiny car with your nice McLaren warranty on it, they won't cover four springs. That's four shocks, that's 10,000 pounds. So the idea of this video is to at least give people a heads up. Obviously, you go into a, a showroom forecourt or a private sale, you're not going to be able to put on a ramp, get on the trades off and do the inspections we do here. And because we're still on such long lead times, I want to at least do a video out there that gave people enough information to see a car in normal environment and at least get a heads up. It won't be the same as an inspection and you're still going to not going to see things underneath the car, but it will give you a heads up for it. Okay, so I've got three models here. I've got a 12C, a 720, and a 570. Things like 600 LTs and GTs and 675 LTs will cover as part of that process. It's also going to be a long video, so in the description, and hopefully down the captions down the bottom, I'll try and tell you whereabouts in the video that we do specific things that are model specific. Now, there are a lot of things about these cars that are common between all of them. Yeah, they share the same engine and gearbox to some extent, and some of the issues that they have are shared across all model planes. But there are also specific model things they're going to cover, and I'll do those one by one on a car by car basis and cover as we go. Okay, so you're at your full court, you're seeing a lovely car you like to look off, and you want to inspect and give a proper inspection. First things we're going to do is we're going to go through the outside of the car, visually seeing what we can see, seeing what issues what you know are going to cause an issue, and then we're going to go inside the car, then we're going to start the car, do a road test. All right? So, no intent purposes, outside the car. Condition is important, okay? Most important thing about these cars is the condition. You've really got to get a car that's in good condition to be looked after properly, okay? Having nice shiny bodywork is one thing, but the overall condition, looking at things like curb wheels, any damage on the underside of the doors, all these kind of things are all important to have. But of specific nature, and this is something that's been doing, causing issues last year and a half or so, is the paintwork. Now, McLaren decided to redefine what, what the, the, the warranty terms of paintwork was from 10 years down to five years for perforation, okay? The bottom line you have is that I've got 50 cars here. I can guarantee every one of them will or has had paintwork at some point in time in its life. I don't care if it's a 570, a 720, a GT, don't care. They are all affected for different reasons. Now, I'm not going to go in this video about the causes of the, of the corrosion or why or wherefores. I've done another video about that, which will be a link in there somewhere, I'll put it in the description as well. So, what I'm going to do is cover things, what to look for, and also in terms of specific model ones and where to look for if you can. Okay, it does affect all the cars, but in slightly different places and for different reasons. So, let's start with the Sports Series, okay? Sports Series, because 540, 570, 600LT, 620R, all of them, they're all the same, by that in terms of bodywork, and all of them are going to be affected by the corrosion on the paint for the aluminium panel specifically. What you're looking to have is specifically around certain areas. So, first of all, the underside of the bonnets, okay, that's a crucial bit. So pop the bonnet, look down the underside of the bonnet itself. The wheel arches, front wheel arches. What you do is walk around the car and run your fingers underneath the wheel arch, front and rear, and feel for smoothness. If it's all nice and smooth, it's fine. If it's starting to feel rough and bubbly, I can guarantee it's going to be blistering paint, it will need a dressing. 
Now we are doing on average four to six weeks, six cars a, a month in terms of paintwork. It is very fixable. You have to know what you're doing. You need to know how to blend paint because often McLaren aren't really helpful in terms of paint, but it's perfectly possible and perfectly fixable. But it is something you're gonna to need to address. A small little bubbling on one part of the wing will spread, okay, back to life. So walk in a car, check down the side of the arches. That's the crucial thing. On a sport series as well, on, on, on the side of the bonnet, look at the front leading edge of the doors, the bottom corner, right by the trim at the bottom. We're looking for a slight bubbling down there as well. Sometimes on the rear, on the, on the rear arches as well, the front leading edge on the rear arch can sometimes be done. Rarely get it on roofs, rarely get it on boot lids, rarely get it on rear bumpers. Primarily it's arches, bumper, and front door, door leading edges. Okay, those are places to look for. On a super series car, older super series car, 12C650, it's the same. It's underneath the arches, it's also the underside of that bonnet lip, etc., and also down the front of the edge of the doors, although that's rarer on a super series car. It's mainly wheel arches and the bonnet, etc. You can get them around the rear arches as well, and down the leading edge of the back as well, and also the bottom side of the doors. The main thing is, is inspect every part of the body work for what you're looking for there. And it's a bubbling type feeling you can feel with your fingers and looking at the pictures, it's, it's quite obvious. And a small bubble will turn to a bigger one. 720, slightly different, again, same areas in terms of the arches are sport importantly, front and rear, but also the front parts of the, of the front wings. Uh, also the, well, the rear section of the front wing also prone to it, and the leading edge of the door again. It's all the same areas basically, they're subtly different behind them. You rarely get them on the side of the bonnet on a 720, but we have seen it now. And the GT is exactly the same as 720, down the doors and down the leading wings. So first thing is walk around the car, check all the paintwork side of it. It's going to cost you about £1,000 to £1,500 pound per panel to repair. More so if it's like a Volcano Red or Volcano Orange, because you have to do more blending to get that into the car, because those do have different in terms of fading rates on paints. It's perfectly fixable, perfectly possible, but it's not something you can do for free. So check the car first. So if you've got four bits of bubbling paint on all four wings, you can have a five or six thousand pound bill to get right, okay? You can use that as a negotiation point in buying the car. More importantly, hopefully the guy who's selling the car has had it rectified and being done. Second look for is also PPF. Now, a lot of McLarens have a paint protection film fitted. And I have to say, I've seen some really good stuff and some absolutely woeful applications of stuff. The bottom line is that it is a useful thing to have. It's, it's worth having, but if it's done badly or done too quickly in the paint cycle, it will wreck the paint when you pull it off. The thing to look for is look at a car that's got consistent PPF. Now, for example, we've seen cars have PPF on the bonnet, but not on the wings. Now, that's a classic example where the wings have been repainted and the guy doesn't want to pay the extra 50 or pound to put PPF back on. If it's got PPF on the front, it'll be bumper, wings, bonnet, or it'll be bumper and wings, or bumper on its own. But you'll rarely have it so that so the, the, the bumper and the bonnet are done, but the wings aren't. Ditto the rear sections as well. So you have one side's got PPF, one side's not. Now, trick to PPF checking is if you can see it, it's probably a bad install, okay? So you have to look for it. Uh, and, and some PPF should wrap around the edges and be lovely stuff, but you will get ones that are cut down the middle of the bodywork. I've seen one where the bonnets had half PPF on it. Um, fortunately, that's a bit in the past. But things to consider, when we paint a car, we wait two and a half to three weeks before we PPF it. You know, I've got customers screaming for the cars back. I want my car at summertime. I don't care. I'm not gonna put PPF in my car until the paint has cured. It's a minimum of two weeks, sometimes even three. Okay, so bear that in mind as well. Camera on the outside of the car, check windscreen trims, especially on super serious cars, they're prone to lifting off. It's a tiny fix, doesn't take too much, but they're 25 quid each, something to consider. And check the windscreen is not being cracked. Okay, so in various bits and all the cars, they all can suffer from stress fracture, especially cars that go on track. It's not exactly a, a negative for the car, but look for the windscreen if you can. Camera raised on the outside of the car, check the carbon fiber. Check it's not wrapped, okay? We see the people over this car saying lovely carbon fiber, and it's not. It's an aftermarket carbon fiber or it's wrapped. So quickly check that as well. Genuine carbon fiber does have an add value to a car. Wrapped carbon fiber is alright, isn't it? it? It may be nice looking, but it's not carbon fiber. And check the specification. Any dealer, including us, if you give us a chassis number, we can list the exact specification that car came with. Okay, so we list those there. There may be other things added on. Soft closed doors, for example. They can be added on quite easily and it's quite a common upgrade for most people. Similar thing I do, shut the door, shut it gently, see if it shuts properly. Another thing is about sitting in cars and looking outside is also looking at window gaps. Sometimes windows can cause problems, especially on sports series cars. So it's something to consider at making sure the windows up and down fully when, the, when you open and shut the door from the outside. Second thing is all tyres. Now, again, not easy to actually run. We, we go through this in a road test part of the video as well. But tyres are a classic one. McLarens need their geometry checking every year. I guarantee that. They get knocked out very easily because of double A wishbone suspension, and most people don't do it enough. So check the tyres. Now, importantly, that means checking the inside edges. So get the tyre and go full lock 
left, full lock right, and look at the inside edge of the tyre. It should wear evenly across the entire tyre. Tire. A slight amount more on the inner edge because of cam camber and how the car is driven, but it shouldn't be radical. We've seen cars that are down to the cores on the inside, and you've got six mil tread on the outside. That's a classic example of the geometry we put out. It will need checking in terms of process. This on the rear. You have to clamber on the floor a little bit, but if you can't, can't look at the car and clamber on the floor, don't buy it, frankly. Look at it. Sticking with clamber on the floor, get underneath the car. Now, obviously, leaking gearboxes historically have been issues, less of an issue now. But if you, if you, obviously, the only way to check it properly is to get the under trays off and look inside. You can't do that. But underneath the under tray at the back of the middle of the car, if it has been leaking, there will be some residue. It hasn't been wiped up on the underside of the, of the, of the, of the tray. So run your fingers on the in tray. It should be nice and clean. If you've got all residue on there, it does suggest there has been a historical issue or an existing issue worth looking at. Okay, so generally speaking, that's it. Look at the outside of the car, look at the bodywork, uh, and look to the condition. Other thing is lights. Um, 12C lights are, 12C 650 lights are more prone to having a, a, essentially mold inside the light. There is a way you can take them off, break them open, fix them, but again, it is not 100%. Okay, we've done a few uh, and been quite successful, and we've done a few have failed miserably on. We don't offer it anymore, simply because I cannot guarantee a 100% response rate for it. But in real life, it needs to be done that way. So in terms of overall, you're looking for lights over. Sports series, not affected, but certainly super series, or less affected. So uh, uh, earlier super series cars, haven't seen any 720 lights affect the way all GTs are better. All right, so a complete look over, look at the car, look at the condition, look at the bodywork, tires, all around from there. At that point in time, you look at the outside of the car, then we'll start looking at the inside. All right? Okay, so I'm sat inside the car. This is a sports series, a GT of all things. And so what you're looking for here is just an overall condition of the car. Is the leather any good? Is everything all looking in terms of surface, etc., and condition of it? Is our Cantara marked? Everything else is there. Specific, specific things on sports series are glove box. This glove box button here is a prone failure. Push, push too hard, and literally it falls inside. Whole dash has got to come out to replace it. So it's not, not an inexpensive thing to fix. So check that works. In terms of looking at the rest of it, um, what you're looking to do is basically have a look at the car. Does it all look a nice condition? But also start to look at the, the, the condition of the switches. Okay, we've seen these issues where people have poured a drink down the switch panel down here, and it's caused all kinds of problems down here. So make sure it's all nice and clean and processed from there. Okay, last thing is put your foot in the brake and start the car. Okay, now noises on these cars, they are a dry sump system. Ideally, try and start the car when it's cold rather than it's being warmed up because you will hear the engine as it should be. Now, when they start up and they do all do the same thing, they will make some ticking noises, okay? Part of it is down to the drive sump system and the top of the engine is relatively dry compared to another kind of engine. And secondly, injectors are quite noisy and they're right behind your ear. Now, a GT here has got more shielding. You'll hear less inside the car and outside. So try and start the car with someone listening outside the car when it's cold and ditto you starting it, okay? A simple answer, see what it does. That's right. Uh, Chubbs up. You inspect this car. It should be okay. Now you are going to get some condensation coming out of the exhaust. It's stone cold, and the car will go on what's called cold start, which basically means it's running more fuel into the system to heat the cats up. So it will be louder, and you'll generate a bit more condensation at the back of the car. Um, fuel's low. Um, so what you want to do is wait until it comes off cold start, whilst listening to the engine. Now, listening for outside is good, but listening inside is good as well. Ideally, one person outside, one person inside, listening to the engine, making sure it's not making any ticking noises that go on beyond 20, 30 seconds or so. Some degree of ticking is okay, as I said, but it shouldn't be carrying on. It shouldn't also be red related. You shouldn't have the ticking up and down rhythmically with the RPMs, okay? We get sent videos three or four times a day saying, is it okay? It's really hard for us to tell from a video. It really is. There's not really much we can do. We can hear it and a rough idea, but the videos are, are not the easy way of doing it. So first thing to consider is make sure it's happening. Okay, just settle down quite nicely and go from there. Whilst you're waiting for it to warm up, have a look at all the switch gear, etc. for that. Now for sports series, really important, check the radio, okay? Hit radio or come up saying tuner not found, okay? Nine times out of 10, a, a solid reset down on the system will make it work, but if it doesn't, it may need a tuner to reset. Right, that's gone off cold start now, and as you see, it's, RPMs have dropped, it's gone down, we've got no signs of smoke, any smoke continuing, and there's no ticking noises. This is a good engine, okay? Um, once we do the road test and come back, we're gonna go through bits in terms of the oil check as well after that, but we'll go through the process here. To check your radio works. Um, also, I always like to check the sat nav. You know, has it been used? These, the sat nav and all these cars are pretty crappy, but see if it actually functions and make sure it works. If you do get something where you can't see in the screen, press and hold down the central button until you see a McLaren logo come up. 
that will reboot the RS system. So if you don't have any minor niggly issues, would you do something to get on McLaren's? Shouldn't really give you a walk away from a car, is check that system if you can. Okay, whilst you're in here, whilst the owner is running, this is the time you're going to get the issues of rattles and things falling apart while you're static. So sit there, listen around, this car feels lovely, it's a nice spec too, and then go from there. All right, so that's the interior done. Turn the engine off from there, and the next thing we'll do will be the road test side. Okay, so before the road test, I thought I'd do a few more interiors, might as well. This is obviously a 720, super serious car. Generally, nice place to be. The same thing applies, checking for the interior trim and the conditions of it. A couple of civic things about 720 is worth looking at. First of all, the roof. Um, do the same thing. Let's start the car up and hear the noise again from the noise of the engine if you can. Service exceeded. There you go. <laughs> so, same thing applies. On cold start, keep an eye on the exhaust in terms of how much is coming out. It should just be water vapour through white smoke. Um, and then hear the ticking in terms of the engine now. Sounds nice and smooth. Once it goes a cold start, and then listen again from the cam. Now, a couple of things about 720 specifically. Gorilla glass. Now, this particular one has an electrochromatic roof, which is pretty cool, but check it works. You should press the button, even get lighter, uh, and I'll press the button back again, go darker again. Now, the thing about electrochromatic roof, they're bloody expensive to fix, okay? You have seen some where they delaminate around the top edges, so it's worth inspecting that to make sure there. The other ones, obviously, more normal are the uh, Gorilla glass roofs. So, Gorilla glass is very prone to cracking, okay? There's been multiple replacements. There are various aftermarket options now available, but make sure you've got no crack in the Gorilla glass itself. Again, three and a half thousand pounds of panel to fix. You don't want that as the answer, so keep an eye on that one. Other than that, interior on, on details on the 720 are pretty reliable. Um, again, same thing applies in terms of the RS system. Do a hard reboot if it's something missing on it, etc. but it should be pretty straightforward. Um, McLaren learned a lesson on glove boxes and they took it off, so no one to check. Other than that, same thing, check the interior trim, condition of it, check the marges, and go from there. All right? Right, so on a road test, doesn't matter what model it's going to be, I did actually video the road test, but it was so dull I thought I'd stop it. Um, on a road test, doesn't matter what model, the thing to consider is to warm the car up properly. Most importantly, don't go thrashing somewhere else's car when it's cold. It's one of the major issues, the top engine issues, is, is, is these cars. And just drive the car normally, etc. But drive it in automatic mode. When you first start the car, it'll automatically go into auto mode. Just make sure the gears go up and down smoothly in auto mode, okay, as it's warming up. Okay, if you are going to get issues in terms of gearboxes, selectors, it will demonstrate itself more clearly in auto mode rather than manual as it tries to hold a gear or gets juddery. It'll be a smooth movement, but don't expect an automatic gearbox. These are manual gearboxes and auto function, that's all. Once warmed up, bug it into manual and up and down the gears in manual if you can. Now, on the control action panel in the middle of the car, okay, <clears throat> they're all the same but do different subtle functions. So, for example, you have your left hand um, is going to be your handling and your right hand uh, model uh, knob is going to be for your power, okay? I immediately put it straight in power mode. What's the point? Go to different levels. You can't tell the difference between two of them. They're all about throttle mapping rather than actual power. But I start off on the comfort setting for all three cars. Now, on the sports series cars with non-active suspension, there still should be a subtle difference between the comfort mode and the track mode. So I go from straight from comfort and straight to track on a nice bit of bumpy road and see how it feels. It should still feel pretty comfortable and still be quite sharp in terms of handling, but comfort mode is a little softer. You should feel some difference. Now, the Super Series cars, where they have active suspension, they also have the accumulators, which is a, a known common failure point. Now, I've done a video about how to test your accumulators. It'll be linked down there somewhere and in the, in the description. don't want to go through details now. But bottom line is try and drive the car on a bumpy road in both comfort and in race setting just to make sure they feel different. Comfort should feel radically different to, to race mode because of the active suspension. As you're driving along, now in the UK, all of our roads are cambered, so water runs off the road. Don't drive a straight bit of load and literally look at the steering wheel. It should be dead straight. They're pretty accurate making sure they're straight. If the steering wheel is off by several degrees either way, I can guarantee your geometry is out. Okay? Feel the vibration through the car. If you get vibration through the steering wheel that comes in at a certain speed and goes away at a certain speed, it'll be wheel balance. If you vibration through the seat of the car or through the pedals and the same thing where it comes and goes at different, different speeds, it'll be rear balance. If you get vibration in a car, it's not related to the, to the vibration of, in terms of speed and won't go away after a certain speed, it's something else. It's probably going to be the track right end, etc. As you're driving along the car, etc., gently let go of the steering wheel. Okay, on a straight bit of road with camber, the car should gently pull to the left-hand side. I think in most of the markets, they all camber off the road, so whichever side the road's going to be. It won't be aggressive, but it'll be a gentle movement as the camber road pulls it to the side. Okay, it's designed for that for safety. Um, so check that if you can. If any kind of aggressive movements turns letting go of the steering wheel, 
Again, it's an issue with terms of geometry. And again, you check the tires as well. For the super serious cars, check their air brake. Okay, a couple of things, got to be about 50 mile an hour for a start. Make sure the aero is on on the car and then floor it. Okay, you don't need to go very quickly, but flooring the accelerator to more than 90% will drop the wing down to its flat position. If you've got an air brake issue, it will fault up then rather than braking. And then under hard braking, the air brake should come up and the braking hard brake again. It's all great you're doing this with a poor guy on the car next to you, climbing the walls as you're screaming at the car. You don't need to drive super fast or do it completely mad. The air brake will kick in quite quickly, but make sure it's activating going through the process from there. Okay. Other than that, how's a car feel? Does it pull nicely, neatly, uh, any, any issue in terms of noise, etc. Um, all worth having. Uh, finally, at the end of the road test, keys, okay? The, the RF signals from McLaren keys aren't the best in the world, and we've seen them interfered quite a lot. Make sure both the keys will work on the car. So if you need to wave the key around underneath the RS, that's fine, that's where the pickup point is on most of these cars. But if it can't recognize the key from inside the cabin or further away, a, it may just be something simple like the battery changes need changing the keys, or it could be something more sinister. Either way, it's worth making sure they all work across the board. Um, on older cars, you are going to see a, a light come on saying tracker a battery fault. It's the internal 9 volt battery. Most times we swap the trackers out anyway once they get to a certain age because they're not that good. Um, but in terms of generally, it's just a battery swap, which is actually a pain in the neck to do. So keep an eye on that one. And check things like on the service lights, how, how far away from the service is. To reset service lights on these cars does need our diagnostic kit or the MDS diagnostic kit. So it's not something the average battery garage can happily reset a service light. So check that if you can. If it's within 60, 90 days, the end of it, it will pop up on the screen. Otherwise, you can check in the service menu from there as well. Okay, but generally the road test should feel nice and solid. Pull that quite nicely, no coughs, no misfires. And then when you come back in again, do an all level check. Okay, now I'm not going to show you how the all level check, I've done another video about that, there'll be a link there somewhere because they're different, different cars. What you want to make sure is basically go in there and check the oil. Now it needs to be about 90 degrees plus in terms of temperature, slightly lower for the earlier super serious cars, but the procedure is actually the same. Sit there, static, foot on brake, hold the accelerator down, and measure the oil. If it's low but in the green, acceptable. If it's in the orange or in the red, walk away. Okay, there's not to say it's damaged or there's a problem with it, but why look at a car that the guy who's looking after it isn't maintaining the oil level straight away, which is a crucial thing for these cars. Okay, so just check that after the road test. Um, if the car has got too hot in your road test, let it cool down. Generally 90, 95 degrees or temperature. The system will still measure when it's too hot, uh, when it was too hot, but it'll give you an in incorrect reading. It's only really initial on the 12 c so the 570s, 720s are slightly different. So as long as it's warmed down, check that it can. And then same thing applies. Walk around the car, any, any problems or anything else there, squeaks, rattles, that kind of stuff, and go from there. All right, so hopefully that, that, that will help you. Um, like I said, I would never buy a, a McLaren without a full inspection, okay? And bear in mind, I know about these things, if I'm saying that, you've got to say there's a reason for that. I'd rather you waited eight weeks and went to a dealer and had it inspected. And just be careful of inspections. We have some AA inspections, charged a guy 400 pounds for an inspection. No, sorry, take about 700 pounds for inspection, and missed four broken springs. Okay, so that's a £10,000 job. The guy got the money back from the AA at the time. But these are not easy cars to inspect that you're doing. And part of these videos, I know a lot of the trade watch these things, is to help people. You know, I'd rather someone found the problem before they bought it than bought a car, discover the issue afterwards, and hand, hand with a bill. Okay, so look for them first. Okay, same applies to the cars we sell here. We do all this, all of, everything is rectified, every paint was checked and done and finished off. So, do buy from a reputable source. Okay, yes, we're one of them, but there are plenty of places out there. As long as they're not inspected. So, you can do the forecourt, do the check around place. And if you find these things on the car in the forecourt inspection and you can see there are issues in there, raise a question mark. There are nice cars out there, wait for the right spec to come along. Don't force the issue. At least this way you can be forewarned or forearmed, see what issues you've got on the car, and buy a good one rather than buying yourself a nightmare later on. All right, hope that's helpful. There were links in the description in terms of bits and areas. We'll try and find in the caption so with different bits, different models, because there's quite a lot of cover in one video, but hopefully it's get you a good idea. Um, of course, any questions you've got, happy to help. Uh, we're calming down our work-wise now, should get a few more videos coming out, but hope that's useful, and uh, talk to you again soon. Cheers.